In this video, I'm going to inform you about the SD Access DNA Center and service components. We need to have this knowledge. Why? Because if you want to understand the commu communication between the components of Cisco SD Access, you need to have insight about these components. Okay, let me to show you the in communication methods and also the components of Cisco DNA Center appliance and how it can communicate with the, for example, Cisco ICE. As you can see here, we have the DNA appliance, DNA Center appliance. This is DNA Center appliance generation two, and it is in hardware version. And as you can see, DN2 hardware appliance, because you know that we can implement the DNA Center in the appliance or in the as a virtual machine okay let me to explain about the components actually this is our uh, uh, appliance and this is our cisco ice that uh, you know that we use cisco ice for authentication for uh, applying policies and some other things and here you can see that we have campus fabric you know that in campus fabric we have the underlay Cisco switch, Cisco router, Cisco wireless, actually APs. And also, you know that here we have the component of Cisco SD access, include the actually different roles, the fabric edge node, fabric border uh, node and fabric control node. Okay. And actually, this is a communication between the DNA center appliance, okay, the blue, and also uh, here we have the ice, and also here we have the campus fabric. As you can see, inside of DNA center, we have multiple components. I want to explain about them. And also, actually, this is DNA center appliance. And also, here we have different methods of communication between the, for example, DNA center appliance and ICE and also campus fabric. We need to know about them. Okay, let me to start talking about the Cisco DNA center component. As you can see here, we have Cisco DNA center GUI or graphical user interface. And uh, actually, this is the graphical user interface for design, for policy, for, uh, provisioning, and also for assurance that we will work with this Cisco DNA Center in all days. Actually, this is the place that you will administer the network, you uh, provision the network, uh, the campus fabric, and also you maintain it, and also it, has, uh, it can provide you many features. Again, about the automation, as you can see here, we have network control platform. Let me to write here, this is our NCP or network control platform. What is the NCP or Cisco NCP? Maybe you hear about it. Actually, this is a subsystem integrated directly into Cisco DNA Center that provide all the underlay and fabric automation and orchestration services for the physical and network layers. Okay, NCP configure and manage Cisco network devices using NetConf, as you can see here, SNMP, and also SSH or CLI, and then provides network automation status and other information to the management actually layer to the Cisco DNA Center GUI. Okay, you will learn about it, but for now we can understand that with NCP, we can actually create our SDA fabric. You can configure your SDA fabric with different protocols, NetConf, Yang, and also SNMP, SSH, and CLI. This is for automation. After that, about the next component, here you can see the assurance, means Cisco DNA Center Assurance. And also, this is the actually NDP or Network Data Platform, okay? About the NDP or Network Data Platform or Cisco NDP, actually this is a data collection and analytics and assurance subsystem that is integrated directly into the Cisco DNA Center.
NDP analyzes and correlates various network events through multiple sources, such as NetFlu, HTTPS, Syslog, you can see them here, and also Switchport Analyzer or SPAN, and identifies historical trends. It uses this information to provide contextual information to NCP, okay, as you can see here we have some uh, API, and also ICE, and it provides network operational status and other information to the management layer means to the Cisco DNA Center again with the API. Actually, all of the data that here we have about the status, about the actually other features will be gathered in the Cisco DNA Center Assurance and they will inform uh, to the NCP and to the management layer, Cisco DNA Center GUI, and you can use them. Also, some information will be sent to the Cisco ICE. Okay, and now you know about the components of the DNA Center appliance. Okay, actually, I will explain about the ICE also, but Cisco ICE and the DNA Center means NCP and NDP integrate with each other to share contextual information through APIs between themselves. Here you can see that we have API, okay? And uh, we can say this contextual information is then provided to the user management layer. Again, here we have API. The NDP sub subsystem shares con contextual analytics information with Cisco ICE and NCP subsystem and provide this information to the user management layer. And the NCP subsystem integrates directly with Cisco ICE and NDP subsystem, okay, to provide contextual automation information between them. And finally, about the Cisco ICE. In Cisco ICE, you know that we need uh, the Cisco ICE in Cisco DNA Center. Okay, and or you know that ICE is the abbreviation of Identity Service Engine. In the future videos, I will explain more than this about the Cisco ICE and its function, about the authentication, about the scalable group tags, or actually control plane uh, in the or policy plane actually in the Cisco SD access. But for now, the basic role of ICE is to provide all the identity and policy services for the physical layer and network layer. ICE means, for, for example, when you have a user and they try to connect to our network, our campus, wired or wireless, okay, it needs to authenticate uh, actually itself in the Cisco ICE. It can be a network device, it can be a user. And also, if you want to apply it policy, again, we use the Cisco ICE. It means that ICE provides network access control. Maybe you hear about the NAC, Network Access Control, or NAC, and identify services for dynamic endpoint to group mapping with the SGTs. I will explain it in the future videos. And policy definition in a variety of ways. Okay, how we can authenticate the users? We have many uh, different protocols, different methods, including 802.1x, you will learn about it, MAC authentication bypass or MAB, and web authentication. Okay, all of them are possible with the help of Cisco ICE. ICE also, okay, collects and use it, uses the contextual information shared from NDP and NCP and other systems such as Active Directory or maybe AWS, Amazon uh, actually, Cloud. ICE then places the profiled endpoint into the correct scalable group and host pool. It uses this information to provide, uh, again, information to NCP and NDP. So, the user means the management layer in Cisco DNA Center GUI, okay, can create and manage group-based policies. ICE is also responsible 
for programming group based policies on the network layer all right and after that you know that about the cisco dna center GUI that you will work it many times in this course actually the cisco dna center management layer is the user interface user experience or ui ux layer where all the information from the other layers is presented in to the user in the form of a centralized management dashboard it is the intent based networking aspect of cisco dna okay a full understanding of the network layer means lisp vxlan and also cisco trust sec that we use it for actually policy plane okay uh, is not required to deploy the fabric in sd access nor is there a requirement to know how to configure each individual network device and features to create the consistent end-to-end -end behavior offered by a cisco sd access the management layer means cisco dna center gui okay abstracts all the complexities and dependencies of the other layers and provide the user with a simple set of gui tool and workflows to easily manage and operate the entire cisco dna center hence the name cisco dna center the newer name is cisco catalyst center let me to show you the cisco dna center gui only for the first view as you can see here we have the login page after login you will see the cisco dna center application and we use it for uh, actually design policy and also provision and also assurance okay and it is possible to see different uh, actually dashboard for cisco dna center according to your version but here as you can see we have this menu design policy provision assurance okay and also here we have many workflows you can use it for implementing many features okay actually cisco dna center uh, applications are designed for simplicity and based on the primary workflows defined by cisco dna center design policy provision and assurance here you can see that we have many workflows configure cisco udn site to site vpn umbrella deployment create layer 3 virtual networks create layer 2 actually virtual network and uh, so on also here now you can see that we have assurance and this is the cisco dna center assurance okay and also we here we have the menu of provision for provisioning our network and now we can understand that uh, for provisioning we use ncp and for assurance we use ndp okay it is obvious now because of that now we can understand the cisco dna center uh, appliance components in dp and cp and the uh, management and after that about the communication between them and also about the function of eyes and you know that here we uh, will learn with more detail about the for example function of eyes and uh, other components but this is a good high level view for us about understanding these components